What we're going to be doing in this tutorial is I'm going to be showing you how to make this kind of like circle animation. It kind of looks like this evolution thing where circles are fighting other circles. You can see there's actually quite a few nodes, but don't let that intimidate you. It's not as bad as it looks. By the way, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. You should know that. Now, the basic idea here is we're going to make a circle and distribute a bunch of points in it, and then we're going to be doing some math to ask ourselves how big should each circle be. Let's actually start calculating these. So a repeat zone is necessary here feed in the geometry, feed out the geometry. We want to do this for the number of points there are. And actually, there's a way to do this using the domain size node. Set this to point cloud, and now we know exactly how many points uh, we should iterate for. We want to instance a circle, and the question is, how big should that circle be? For that instance, I'm actually not going to use a circle. Contrary to what I've said, I'm going to use a cylinder. And the reason for this is we're going to be using some ray casting, which requires faces. It requires depth. Set it basically to zero, but just so it has a tiny bit of depth. So we're going to make sure that each iteration we're only instancing on a single point. And that number is basically going to be this parameter that we're going to keep updating. So initially it's going to be zero. And then each iteration we add one. So it's equal to one, then two, then three. This is going to be where we are instancing our points. I'm going to take these instance on points and join them. What are we going to join them with? Basically a previous geometry and feed that back into the output. You can see if we go to the second geometry output now, we get all our cylinders and and if I get rid of the caps and set this to wireframe, you can see that we have all our cylinders accumulating. So for the position, I want to know the length of this. And I want to take this and have one minus this quantity, which is going to give us the radius so that it's actually touching our circle. Because if you imagine that this is the entire circle and we have a point right here, the size of this point, or in other words, the radius is going to be one minus this distance from here. Bad diagram, but you get the point. Now, the unfortunate thing is we can't just take this and connect it to the radius because this is a field quantity. We're going to basically sample this attribute, but only where the index is equal to the thing that it's going to be on that iteration. And then we can just take this mean and connect it to the radius, and it's going to exactly correspond to the radius that is touching our like larger circle. But you can see a lot of these circles are intersecting like a Venn diagram. So the first thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to explain this step in a bit, is we're going to start off with a cylinder as our initial iteration, making making sure that our depth again is like near zero. And one quick thing I want to account for is I want to make sure these instances are realized, which is going to be important for calculating the nearest neighbor and ray casting and all this. And what we can do is we can take a geometry proximity and basically on every iteration reference it to this like growing instance count, checking where the nearest edge is because that happens to give the cleanest result. And now if we take our radius function and just modify it a little, you can see that very quickly we're getting something different going on here, you can see a lot of these circles are nested. And what these are all going to have in common is they're going to have at least one contact point because they're looking for the nearest circle to make it work. Very confusing, but you can see that this is a procedural effect where we can just increase the points and it's going to work. Now, our last problem is I don't want circles inside of circles. Remember that each circle starts off with a point that gets instanced on. And then for each point, we can actually shoot out a ray towards its nearest neighbor. And basically the trick here is we're going to see if this this vector is aligned to the normal vector if it's facing the same direction or if it's facing the opposite direction. That's basically going to be the difference between interior and exterior. Let's actually do this thing. So we're going to start off with a ray cast node. And then when we subtract these, that is going to be basically this vector, the one that we're interested in. Make this vector the ray direction that we're interested in. And for the target geometry, we want these updated instances. So we're actually seeing if there's a collision there. And just a bit of a corrective term that I've seen actually helps quite a bit here is we're going to take the multiplication and make sure that the x and y are set to one and the z is set to zero so that we are compressing this to the x y plane and there's no like depth to z stuff going on because remember there are cylinders with a tiny bit of depth i'm also going to apply this to the position of the nearest neighbor so that's also flattened out and in theory the only thing we should need to calculate is the dot product between the hit normal and the subtraction vector and this dot product is basically going to be positive or negative so i want to see if it's greater than or less than some amount. And we want to take this index equal situation, which basically says whether or not or where we are going to instance this. And I'm going to multiply it with our custom factor, which is this greater than right here. 
And you can see that instantly this is doing something, not necessarily the correct thing, but it is doing something. And it turns out that what we actually want to calculate for is where this dot product is less than zero. And you can see that makes all our instances disappear, which is weird because that should be working. There's one tiny mistake here, and that is that our initial cylinder has the normals pointing outwards. And since we want to know whether the nearest neighbor does or doesn't work in terms of the dot product, we basically need to take flip faces and connect that right there. Automatically does what it is supposed to do. Increase the density, and now you can see none of these circles are doing the thing. And this by itself is going to work perfectly, except we get these very tiny circles that are kind of subject to glitching around, especially this circle. It's so small. I'm going to say make it so it's like less than negative 0.1, and that's going to get rid of the small circles because those don't satisfy the conditions. And I can just keep like changing the threshold, basically saying which circles can or can't survive here. Now there's basically no getting around adding in a bunch of points and sampling and seeing does this circle satisfy or not. So instead of random, I'm going to set this to Poisson disk, making sure that our density is much higher. And for the minimum distance, I can set this to 0.1 or something. And you can see that should make it a bit easier in theory. I'm not sure. And now the question is, how do we animate this and get it to evolve over time? Well, remember that everything we did here is basically dependent on these points we have here. So really, all we have to do is animate our points to animate the entire thing. So this noise texture is basically going to be our source of randomness. And we need to make sure that this is centered out. So I'm going to subtract by 0.5. This is kind of the normal thing. And the other important thing to do is we want to make sure that this is on the x, y axis. So making sure that z is equal to zero. When we mess with the initial noise, this is what is going to animate this thing over time. More generally, I can take this coordinate system that the noise texture is basically mapped on and animate that itself. Uh, but that is how I did the uh, thing. So thank you for watching this tutorial and thank you Squarespace for sponsoring this video. And if you haven't heard about Squarespace, you basically drag around blocks and build your website without any programming. And three features you might wanna know about is first of all, analytics. So you can actually track who is going to your website and demographic type information. Second of all, there's actually an archive of every file you've uploaded to generate your website. So images, audio, all that kind of stuff. And third of all, and this is the most important feature, like I said, the way you construct your website is with templates and dragging around blocks, so you don't need to be a rocket scientist to do this. So you can head over to Squarespace and play around with it and actually construct your website. And when you're ready to take that thing live, you can use my link in the description to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.